your practice question. You have to practice with this to deduce the dimension of momentum. This is a past question for y from Yek. Number one, deduce the dimension of momentum. Then number two, deduce the dimension of impulse. So solve it yourself. Pause this video and solve it. So when you are done, you compare your answer with mine. Okay, this is the solution. Number one is momentum. What is the formula for momentum? Mass multiplied by velocity. What's the dimension of mass? Capital letter M. Dimension of velocity. LT is the power of minus 1. That is displacement divided by time. So when you combine this, you get M L T raised to the power of minus 1. Very easy. The second one is impulse. What is the formula for impulse? Impulse is equal to force multiplied by time. Impulse is force multiplied by time. What is the dimension of force? Force is mlt raised to the power of minus 2. The dimension of force is mlt raised to the power of minus 2 multiplied by the dimension of time. C. In case you forget the dimension of a particular quantity that you have to combine, for example, let's assume I forget the dimension of force. How would I get it? Remember that the formula for calculating force is equal to mass times acceleration. What's the dimension of mass? M, capital letter M. What's the dimension of acceleration? Lt raised to the power of minus 2. If I combine it, I get M Lt raised to the power of minus 2. So this is dimension of force, okay? If while solving it, you forget the dimension of force, this is how you bring it out. So you put it here, then you put the dimension of time in front of it. So by the time you combine these two, let me take this off. It's not part of our calculation. By the time you combine these two, you get m l t raised to the power of minus 2 multiplied by t raised to the power of 1. If the power is not stated, then you know it is 1. Now we can combine this to get m l t raised to the power of minus 2 plus 1. That is the law of indices. m is just once, m l once, l t. We have t twice. So you write only one and you add the powers. One minus two, or you say minus two plus one. So that will give you M, capital letter M, M, L, T, T, raised to the power of minus two plus one, minus one. That's his dimension of impulse. Take notes that the dimension of Momentum is MLT raised to the power of minus 1. And the dimension of impulse is MLT raised to the power of minus 1. That shows that they have the same dimension. Hence, we can conclude that impulse and momentum have the same SI unit. Remember that the SI unit of impulse is Newton second. Force, Newton, time, second, Newton, second, right? And the SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. That is how we concluded that Newton second is equal to kilogram meter per second. That's how we concluded that they have the same SI unit because they have the same dimension. So that's the another importance of dimensional analysis. It makes you know which physical quantities have the same SI unit. So from this, we can conclude that impulse 
and momentum have the same SI unit. This is the SI unit of impulse, this is the SI unit of momentum. This is the last question you have to practice. You have to deduce the dimension of pressure, given that pressure is equal to force divided by area. So solve this and derive the dimension of pressure. You know, if you are given the formula that pressure is equal to force divided by area. Pressure is force divided by area. What is the dimension of force? Force is mlc raised to the power of what? Minus 2 divided by. What is the dimension of area? L squared. You have to divide mlc raised to the power of minus 2 by L raised to the power of 2. How would you do that? Now, this is equivalent to saying MLT raised to the power of minus 2 multiplied by 1 over L raised to the power of 2. That is equivalent to MLT raised to the power of minus 2 multiplied by L raised to the power of minus 2. According to the law of indices, 1 over L raised to the power of 2 is equal to L raised to the power of minus 2, which is this. Now let's combine this. It's M. You know, the power of L here is 1. If the power is not stated, that means the power is 1. Multiply by T raised to the power of minus 2. This is what we have here. M raised to the power 1. Multiply by L raised to the power 1. Multiply by t raised to the power of minus 2. Then you are multiplying this by L raised to the power of minus 2. This is your m. The power is not stated, so it's 1. This is your l. The power is not stated, so it's 1. This is your t. The power is stated, minus 2. Multiply by your l raised to the power of minus 2. Now we combine these two and bring out our answer. m, the power of m is 1. m appears 1, so you can just write our m. What about our L? L appears twice. L appears twice. So we have L to the power of... We combine 1 and minus 2. 1 minus 2 is equal to minus 1. So the power of L is minus 1. Then our T. We have T just once. And the power is minus 2. This is the dimension of pressure. During dimensional analysis, you have to take note of one very important thing. That is, um, M is not equal to M. Capital letter M is the dimension of mass, while the small letter M is the SI unit of length, meter. The dimension of mass is capital letter M. The SI unit of mass is kilogram, small letter k. Also, when you write your kilogram, you must be careful not to write it like this. This is Kelvin gram. Capital letter K means Kelvin, which is the SI unit of temperature. This is Kelvin gram. But the small letter K and the small letter G, this is kilogram, the SI unit of mass. And as for length, the dimension of length is capital letter L. And the SI unit of length is small letter M, which is meter. You must not confuse it with the capital letter M, which is the dimension of mass. Thank you. Why you speaking to him? Oh, you You the Lagos, oh, If I carry you go banana, my guy, you go love Lagos,